Cool. Great. Hello. Um, firstly, um, Happy New Year. Thank you for, for joining the first B slash event of 2021. If you are new, um, you have, if you are new to BA Slash, welcome again, and a quick intro of myself. So I'm Monique Ho, I work at BA Systems Applied Intelligence um, as a management consultant. I help organizations with their digital products, innovation programs, cybersecurity, operations, um, agile transformation, that sort of thing. And I started this BA Slash community last year. We also have Alan, another organizer of BA Slash. Um, Alan, would you like to introduce yourself too? Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Alan Bouchard, uh, a long-time business analyst and uh, sometime underwriter. So I've been working in a, a variety of BA roles, both in Waterfall and uh, Agile. Thank you, Alan. Um, if you like BA Slash, please spread the words with your contacts, tweet us, follow us on LinkedIn and on YouTube. Every post and tweet that you, you make basically make us as a community reach out to, to more people. So BA Slash itself is a community for, for everyone. The aim is to make it have a peer-led content focus group to explore insights and techniques together regardless of our organizational boundary. It's a, it should become a trusted, comfortable platform to and exchange views and also kind of share knowledge. One of my, my inspirations of starting the BA Slash community is a quote by an American poet singer when you learn, teach, when you get, give. You have, you all have very different um, kind of career path, um, opportunities, experience from, from many of us. So please share your, your valuable experience because that's always kind of interesting to our fellows in the community. Currently, BA Slash, we have 450 signups. Ellen and I feel so excited about kind of the, the interest that people have on what we do. We always have more ideas than our capacity. So it will be a massive help if you would join us to organize more events, articles, or kind of social media posts. Every bit helps. And these activities would also enhance your professional profile. Alan just put out uh, a post that what would you like to contribute to the BA community? So I'm gonna kind of continue talking. Last year, we had 30% of um, female fellows presented at our events. We welcome anyone to present. It would be great to learn more about your story. So drop us a message in the chat or email us if you're interested in sharing your, your experience. Just a few kind of housekeeping points. You will receive the, the slide decks and the recording of this section in a couple of days. Your line is muted right now because we are doing a recording, but feel free to unmute it at the Q&A later. You can also put your questions in the chat box because Ellen will be collating all these and ask the questions towards the end. Last but not least, you are very welcome to stay behind for the breakout sections later. So I'll now hand over to Ellen to introduce our speaker of today. So, we're lucky today and I'm delighted to say that we've got a really experienced uh, product manager and product guru. He's uh, someone that's worked um, across many different aspects of product and product management. I've seen this or a version of this um, presentation before from Oliver, really engaging. I hope you all enjoy it as much as I did. And uh, so here's Oliver. Thank you, Alan. Makes me feel a little bit old to be introduced that way, but <clears throat> perhaps we all <laughs> must become comfortable with our age, right? So, okay, I'm just going to take that down. How's that? Are we seeing this? Yeah, good. Thanks. Perfect. All right. So thank you, everybody, for attending and for anybody you share this to beyond today. The purpose for me being here is to share what they do back there when it comes to product. And then secondly, should you think about joining us in product? And if you're a BA, I would say, arguably, you are already in product and we can't live without you. But um, should you want to become a product manager, product owner, um, product leader, hopefully I can give you some insights into what I've learned. You'll notice there's a theme. Some of you may be old enough to know what this is. Quest for Glory was a computer game when I was young and I loved it. And I still remember thinking how 
ahead of its time the graphics were <laughs> but there's uh, there's a few photos along the way so can i get to the next slide yes good so my name is oliver last name is happy if that makes you smile then it's done its job um, my role at form three which is a financial cloud um, or a payments pro uh, payments gateway i guess and provider to and consultancy to um, tier one banks also to challenger banks across the world but mostly focused in the uk and europe for now um, so my role is as senior product manager for core is to look after the core services of that platform um, which is quite a broad team but certainly keeps me busy form three happens to be hiring and uh, the rate of hiring is quite fast seven to eight senior engineers a month and one to two product people a month so should you be looking for a new role or should someone you know be looking for a new role please refer them to us we are only limited in our growth by how quickly we can identify and absorb great people like you. And thank you to BA Slash for having me here. So moving on. So what we're going to talk about today is what is product? Just going to, I find the polls are popping up on the screen. There we go. Uh, what is product? What makes a great PM? Getting into product, a day in the life, and what your PM needs from you. This is kind of an interesting one, a little appeal from Product Camp. So let's move on to a bit of a story. So who does product well? Why does it matter? Why should we care? What's in it for me? If you look at the logos on the screen, now granted some of them are a little bit old already, um, the only reason the logos are on the screen is because I would say they do product well. Some of them may do marketing well, but that only takes you so far. What do I mean? Let's take an example. So we, those of us old enough to remember, will we'll remember the Motorola flip phones. They did tech really well. Um, so did Ericsson and along came Nokia and Nokia made it a bit sexier. They put it in the matrix, the movie. They did a bit of marketing to it and they made their phones desirable. Whether or not the technology was better is arguable. Fast forward. I know this is an early one, but when it first came out, the iPhone revolutionized what was happening in smartphones. Um, and effectively, they'd spent the time to talk to people to realize that this group of people called users rather than consumers wanted to jab at things on their screen with their fingers. By realizing that, by introducing the touch screen when Nokia for a long time um, was very public and saying that that wasn't something people wanted or needed and it was a bad idea, has led to, well, only Apple existing now in its current form. So the moral of the story is those who listen to their users and those who build things that people want, win. There'll be a couple of these takeouts along the way. So what is product? So what's important here from Marty Kagan, who is one of the luminaries of product and behind eBay and a few other businesses, as a product manager, you're respons responsible for ensuring that what gets built is both valuable and viable. That is all that matters. We build some amazing stuff. I'm sure we've all been involved in projects that do, but if people don't use it, and if it isn't viable commercially, then really it has very little value. So let's have a look at just setting the scene. In terms of the stakeholders, we've got the engineering folks, we've got the business folks, and we've got users. Now, I'm just going to put the boat out fully and say, let's just say that product sits within engineering. And I know in some organizations, particularly those who don't build software, that it could sit in business. So given these three groups, how does a product team structure. Now I'm giving you the software as a service or SaaS model. I know that there are different models of product teams, almost as many as there are types of businesses in the world. But for the purpose of just us being on the same page, we've got a product designer who might be a UX person. We've got the product manager, the, uh, the kind of common denominator unit. We've got the product owner, the business analyst, project manager, depending on how many projects and how big your products have become and how big the customer rollouts have become. And then you've probably got a lead engineer who works in with a team of engineering folks. There may be a couple of other people around it, but let's call this the nucleus. So what are the differences between these roles? My version, 
which is a Kiwi come Australian come English version um, with a bit of American um, business in there, is that a product owner is somebody who looks after one, generally one backlog, generally one product. They're very close to their scrum team. They are organizing that team. They're making sure they have work to do. And they're also deciding what needs to be done next. The business analyst, you all know this one well, um, basically does so many things and could easily be doing any of these roles. And I'm sure many of you have, but stereotypically would be gathering requirements, talking to users and keeping things organized. I know that's an oversimplification, but I love business analysts and I wish I could have more. Um, product managers are more likely to look at multiple backlogs, sometimes multiple products. And that's kind of the key differentiator I see between an owner and a manager. Therefore, a small business might have a product owner and no product manager. A larger business might have just one product manager and one like form three has a large number of these and a large number of these. We don't happen to have product owners. And the reason is that we scale so quickly. Um, each person who comes in needs to be at a level of seniority to take over a chunk that is going to grow quickly. Then we've got the project manager, and I think we can all agree that that person is delivery focused. So they may look after a series of projects or a series of customers. I've learned that they are also critical because eventually there is too much going on for one product manager or a product manager and BA pair to be able to manage between them, particularly when you deal with enterprise rollouts and customers who are large and have large desires. So this then scales. And here's an example. This just happens to be drawn from form three. There may be a series of teams or what Spotify might call squads. Um, they may sit in the platform team, which is to, to build out the thing and make sure that it runs and that it's got connectivity and uptime, et cetera. And in my case, core is one of these teams, platform is another, infosec or scaling might be another. Then you have a series of products that are built on top of that that infrastructure, if you like. So in our case, we've got gateways for different um, countries, for UK, for EU, et cetera. And then you might have a team of folks working specifically on enterprise. So if you take a business like, uh, let's say, uh, Apple. So where when Apple was in servers, they would have had an enterprise team. If you take someone like Hewlett Packard, it's the same sort of thing. The reason I say that is these, although it scales, these cells, these, these units of product teams um, remain true. And that is an important tenant of Agile. Right, moving on. How does product fit into the business? So first of all, some people come along, particularly in startup land, and those founders have an idea, right? They have a bottle of wine, they have an idea, they move on to the, the, the thing that, the reason that drives them to start a business, right? So Amazon wanted to sell books, then they wanted to, um, to share their hosting with the world in the form of Amazon Web Services. Um, they knew who they wanted to share it to. They wanted to share it to people who needed to host web applications. Along comes product, and product is critical here. And you might say that they are also involved in this early stage, but particularly, what are we going to build? What is our Amazon Web Services going to look like? Um, what is it going to include? What is it not going to include? Um, then the question around what do we do first? And often within engineering, this may be lost in translation. They, they want to make sure that they've got enough work to do. They may not realize how much prioritization is happening behind the scenes to talk to folks about what comes first and what comes last. Um, and then how it's actually built and the product teams heavily involved in the requirement gathering and solution finding. Um, lastly, what do we do next? That's also really important. And the job is never done. The cycle is never complete um, unless a product is end of life. So here's another good one. It's what gets used, not what gets built. Critical. So many businesses have died with amazing functionality. In fact, so many best in breed businesses have died with amazing functionality. Think of Betamax versus VHS. Lots of people would say that Betamax was a better video um, format, but VHS won because it got used. Point is, <clears throat> enough is enough. It's often the technically rich solution that doesn't win um, because another got to enough and duplicated that. All right, 
what makes a great PM? Is it strength? Is it agility? Is it vitality? Is there some luck? There's definitely some luck in business. So moving on. So I asked a few folks around. Um, first of all, let's start with a BA from my own team. What makes a great BA? A great BA. A great PM. A clear scope and a soundboard. And that's because obviously when you're working on gathering requirements and building out projects, you need folks to talk to. Cross-functional communication from Laura and marketing. Um, the ability to communicate what we have decided we are going to do, what we have done, what makes it great, what we're going to do next, what we haven't done, what we are not, it's critical. And to the marketing team, they need that from a PM. Empathy. This is an interesting one from a CIO in New Zealand. Um, when talking to a technical organization, the ability to listen and understand what is really possible and the, the physical constraints of the team and of time and of technology is important. We need to be able to bend. Servant leadership. I quite like this one from another pro um, product manager. Um, I may be called a product manager, but I do not manage people outside of my product team. Um, the engineers work with me because we're all here to get the job done. The operations people work with me for the same reason, finance, admin, et cetera. Um, I am a servant leader. I lead a group towards a common goal. I am not a, a leader because they have to do what I say. Critical difference and a critical success factor in the way we approach people and convincing them of the way we would like to go. You'll see more of that later. And then the last one from a founder this time, team building. Well, obviously, lie detection is important as well because customers will tell us something is the most important thing and they won't buy without it. And then when we really talk it through, sometimes the rubber hits the road and that feature falls away. Um, but that team building piece is critical. If you don't love people, working with people, helping people, leading and supporting people, product is going to be difficult. So product is a mindset. Why do I say this? It's not just limited to the product team. And if I was to look through the, the group of you and we were to talk about things and work together, those who were coming to me in product with questions, with things they'd thought about, with things that concerned them, with things they'd heard customers say that had become a theme, those are the people who have that mindset and those are the people who make great PMs in years to come. And I've seen this time and again from customer success, from, um, from account management, from, um, from being a BA. What about the process of product? I won't dwell here because you are process people and you will have seen this before. But just so we're on the same page, there was a world back in the day, Alan and Monique um, can remember it, I'm sure, when we went through a process of product development. In fact, it was called the product development process. It took a long time. You spend a lot of time in concept and research. Maybe you talk to some customers. There were a lot of documents, things like product requirement documents that had pages in the dozens, maybe even in the hundreds. Um, then you finally get to launch at the end of the waterfall and perhaps the market's moved. Perhaps there was a miss in things that were gathered as, um, as ideas. So we evolved, we evolved to Agile. The idea of Agile being test and deliver and fail or succeed very quickly. What I like about this is it, it indicates that this is not a product manager only thing. There's a team involved, right? The ownership has shifted to the team. Um, there are requirements drawn up, there is a design process, the development occurs, perhaps some testing, back to development, back to testing, maybe design, it's deployed and the cycle repeats very quickly. Um, in our own team, testing is within this team completely. There is no quality assurance team that you throw um, developed work over to and it works really well because if the person doing the coding is also responsible for the tests passing, you can imagine what happens to the quality of the coding. So moving on, what's the point? Get to test quickly. That's what we've learned. That's what the last 20 years has taught me. Um, it's funny how people say things to us. We read them in books, um, we see them on the stage, and then we realize them to be true many years later. <laughs> this is one of those. Um, just test the smallest part of the idea with enough people to get an idea whether it's going to fly or not, then build on it. So where do PMs come from? Are you gonna be a fighter, a magic user, or a thief? 
here's some ideas. So I've seen people in all of these examples come from the product team itself, from, and as a BA, for example, I would consider you already in the product team. Um, from operations, I've seen COOs, chief operating officers. Um, I've seen lots of engineers go into product management. I've seen some go back into engineering because uh, it is a different skill set. Um, I've seen marketing people, and I'd probably consider myself the same. Uh, and leaders. So I've got a good example in mind of a, um, a good friend who started a business, built it up as a CTO, really, and uh, one day realized he needed product people. And he thought, I'll have a crack at that, became a product manager, realized it was a completely new skill set, became the bad guy, as he puts it, and hired some product managers. Um, but I've seen that path, and I've also seen it be successful long term. And then coming out the other side, I guess the message is it's not a one-way street. You can move between being BA and being a PM and back as much as your heart desires. There is no one path, but it is a really useful um, skill set to possess. You might go out to be a um, senior PM, you might go to head of product, you might become a COO, you might move into Scrum Master, and I've seen people do that, and then move on to being agile coaches, or you might found your own business because product does give you a good grounding in all of the pieces of a business. If we take um, an example of how that might flow, you might go BA, product owner, product manager. You might actually jump from BA to product manager um, and then through. I would also argue that <laughs> business analyst has become a career and I work with business analysts who are more senior than me and more experienced than me and perhaps never desire to leave and never need to. And that's how I think there's this really beautiful partnership that's developed between product people and business analysts. If we take my example, it has felt a bit like this, where I was, a guy had talked me into getting on a sandboard with him and going over a jump, which resulted in a few scars. Um, it does feel a bit like hurtling down that hill on the sandboard sometime. Um, I've been through marketing, I then moved into product, I had a, an NGO career break, as many people do, went into customer success or account management, um, I did a bit of marketing again, and then someone realized that, Don't you know product, shouldn't you be doing that? And, and here I am back at it. The reason I say this is there is no one path. Find your own way through, choose the right business for the culture of that business and for how excited you feel about the role. And I would also suggest only make a change when you start to feel that in your gut, not because other people tell you. So what do PMs actually do? Now this slide we could probably pause on for a moment. There is a lot in here. Um, there's the life cycle management up the top right, which is basically someone's got to think about when we need a new product when we launch it, how it's going, is it maturing, is it splitting, is it doing well, is it not? And then eventually every product is end of life, right? Um, even the iPad one day may be end of life, hard though that may be to imagine. Um, there is a, a lot of vision and leadership involved and especially during these COVID times, uh, who often runs the startup, uh, the startup, the stand-up. Um, the stand-up is often run by the PM. So in the morning, I front up to 10, 15, 20 people. Um, we've all had a hard year. We've all had a hard Christmas. Um, it's my role to get the team started for the morning, um, to get them talking, to get them smiling. That might seem strange, but we are people. And when someone shows us a bit of warmth and gets us smiling, the day is easier. When something changes and the leadership team makes a decision to buy a competitor, to sell a part of the business, to merge with someone, to go into a partnership, to exit a partnership, it's the PM that's dealing that through to the team and saying, this is what I understand it to be. This is what we are doing. This stuff is really, really important. Um, those who love people will excel. Those who prefer to stick in a corner um, will, will find it hard. There is a lot of research, and um, if there's one thing that I've learned that I could have done more of, it's talking to customers. Second thing I could have done more of is listening to the other people in the business, especially those outside of product, because everybody has eyes and ears, and they all have ideas. Um, there is a fair bit of financials, so a product manager will often carry profit and loss responsibility, so responsibility for the number that, of that division or that area of product, um, which could be 
tens of thousands, hundreds, millions, hundreds of millions, right? So it can be quite a big deal. Um, you've got to build out the roadmap. We've all talked about that, um, so I won't dwell on it. And there is a UX and a product backlog piece if you've got a front end component. Around that, there's a whole lot of sort of hygiene factors. We need to understand how projects run. We need to understand how operations run. And when someone says implementation, what does that mean? Or go live or roll back. There needs to be some process in mind. And thank goodness for BAs because they always keep me process driven. Um, an understanding of development technologies, an example being, I can remember the day somebody said, we're going to move our databases into the cloud. And now I find it difficult to imagine anybody that doesn't have their databases in the cloud. And I feel a bit sorry for them, how much we have changed. Um, and then lastly, there's general market knowledge. That one I would say you build up over time and organizational type is probably more, more important than organization specific. So don't feel like you have to be an expert in insurance to be a great PM in insurance. You could learn it from the people around you. So we have all the responsibility, but no seat on the board. That's critical. Until a few years ago, there was no chief product officer. There was no exec level product person. And even more so back then, it was leadership through convincing people. And I think it's just, if you take one thing away, it's that um, bringing a group of people to a point and a decision is a team effort. So how can you help your PM? You are my eyes and ears. What do I mean? You are places I cannot be. I'm not in an ivory tower, but I am sat at a desk um, working on things that are coming in largely from others more than from me. And those who are out talking to customers um, are much more likely to pick things up before I do. Share those with me and I will love you for it. Speak up and it is always loud in here. Um, you know when a new PM's joined and you also know when you become a PM because the messages begin. I've often been the highest user in Slack. I'm always in the top 10. Um, that's not a brag. It's just that I'm replying to messages. <laughs> um, give me the short version of what you know to be um, needed. If you are building out some requirements and the happy path is not working for the customer and we need to change course, then give me the short version of it so that I can pick it up and walk with it with you to a solution. Start at the beginning. Just treat me like a dummy. I am not an expert in every part of the business. And if I think I am, then I'm even less of an expert. Challenge me and then get on board. What do I mean by that? Almost nobody says yes straight away to almost anything. And if they do, I question it. I like people to say, like, I don't really think, I like the idea that we could do this instead. It always improves things. What I find difficult, especially in times of change like COVID, um, is when people put up a challenge and then don't get on board. Um, that creates a cultural drag that you've got to get through and get everybody on board before you can move forward. We can only do this together. It is a team effort. If I ever tried to work by myself on something, it will fail. It must be shared with others. So what am I saying? Product is a team effort. If you like working with people, product is a great place to be. You will never be bored. Speaking of which, what are the pros and cons of product from my humble opinion? The breeze is cool, but you feel a shiver deeper than the cold. You're on your own in a very dangerous place. That is day one, week one, month one of any product job. <laughs> and I think probably day one of many jobs for many of us. Let's be realistic and let me be blunt. The pros are, it's very exciting. You are the center of what's going on. It's constructive because we build things especially in software, especially in fintech. We're helping people um, better the way that they move money around. You're solving problems every single day. People problems, technology problems, functional problems, um, management problems, leadership problems. Um, it is constantly changing. And you know, I can still remember somebody saying, I've heard of this idea called Agile. I think we should roll it out in our team. I was sitting in Sydney that day and that person was an engineer, which just goes to show that 
even a junior engineer can come up with a better way of work that they've heard of on you know whatever channel it might have been that they were on fortran or whatever and they can bring it into the business and change everything for the good it is definitely well paid i wouldn't necessarily say it's the most well paid job you'll find but certainly well paid and i find it meaningful it helps a group of people get something done hopefully for a group of customers that you believe in in a way that makes the better good what about the cons with great power comes great responsibility there is a burden that comes with what you do in my case if payments don't get processed people don't get paid people don't pay their mortgages people can't buy their food shop for the week i feel that criticality on a micro level um, making decisions on behalf of a team can can direct that team to success or failure i feel that that's why it's important to work with your team and to listen to them as you thread your way the buck stops with you i may not make the decisions but i definitely carry the can it can involve long hours and perhaps we are all our own worst enemy as working from home has shown us um, in this place but the demands are quite high on product um, engineers bas project people maybe not project people are often going home before me um, i should say a lot of the bas work far too much and i'm at them to say folks you're already doing enough so it does cut both ways um, you need to be organized and not being organized doesn't really work in this digital world cracking the invisible whip can be tiring um, what I mean by that with an antipathy and saying is I am trying to move people towards something I know needs to be done. Does that mean they want to move that way? Not necessarily. How do we motivate people? That's a, a, a skill in itself. So what are some lessons that I've learned as we start to wrap up? Product is the science of decision making. What I mean by that is given that all the information is collecting in this point people are telling you as the product person what needs to be done, what's good, what's bad, particularly what's bad. Um, how do you thread a way through? You've got to be able to recognize that this is a thing that needs action. You've got to be able to triage that idea, take it through a process of decision making to get to the right step. It's probably not a big bang, it's probably a um, steps towards a solution, but that decision making process is a science. And it applies to broadly across businesses. And many of you are probably teaching your product teams the science as we speak. Thank you for that. We all need more organizing. Um, sometimes you've got to yield the battle to win the war. Can't be right all the time. I'm wrong more often than I'm right. The team is right more often than it's wrong. And, um, and there is definitely an element of of learning first, listening first, and then getting there together. On the other side, if I do need to say no for the team or for myself, um, it's never a no, but this comes first. And that's critical, particularly to customers. Um, no, we won't be doing that. However, we will be doing this for you first because it's more important or do you disagree? Accept uncertainty, but manage the level. This. I really see from people moving from large companies to small. Large companies move slowly. They can be uncertain, but often there's a high level of certainty. Um, startups particularly show the level of uncertainty. Things can change very quickly. Um, accepting that as a consistent factor and then managing the uncertainty and knowing which things to become more certain of is an art. And it's also a feeling. The best leaders are followed willingly. There's been a few times in my life when I've tried to force people to do things and it was it always went horribly wrong. So the one thing I would say is um, if you find people are agreeing with you, you are leading and you are leading them to a good idea. Well done. That's the best way to do it. Always be listening. I may be saying a lot right now during the day. I spend a lot of my time listening. And the reason is there's a lot going on. And if I don't, I will get behind and I will fall behind very quickly. And don't forget to enjoy it. We are building amazing things that have never been built before. And it doesn't matter if you're in insurance or you're in FinTech or you're in health science or something completely different. Um, we are building the world that we want to live in. So what would I add to that? 
you don't need to know everything. You just need to know someone who does. There will be someone in your organization, and this affects your daily role also, who can answer any question. That person might be a customer. They might be sometimes a previous employee, um, but generally they will be someone within reach, particularly on Slack. So if you want to find out more, Quest for Glory the game, you can get to from Sierra online. You can play it online and it still looks as glorious as this. If you wanted to find out more about me, I have a few podcasts, one called Old Fox, Young Fox, which is kind of an older and a younger um, uh, perspective on worlds that the, the world issues the world faces. Problem Busters is about fixing things. It's very engineering and science based and Gone Workabout is just talking to interesting people, particularly when traveling. If you want to learn more about product, back to this guy, Marty Kagan, amazing. This book, great place to start. There is a new version. Um, I would go for either. If you're looking for work or you know someone who is, please contact Form 3. We are hiring avidly and it is a really good place to work. I genuinely really enjoy it. And if you want an email newsletter to learn about product, the kind of the drip feed way, I really like this. This is started by Marty Kagan and it's a nice weekly summary that's not, it's not scrum and agile centric, but he tackles the same problems, many of which you will face as BAs. Um, and if you want to meet people and come to talks, come to more BA slash events, obviously, but also Mind the Product is kind of the central hub and the conference for product people. And Product Tank is a, an Eventbrite-based monthly get-together. You'll find them in London and Brighton and San Fran and Berlin, many places. So in summary, product companies win. And I believe this more and more every day. Every icon on your phone is a, com is a product company. Simple as that. Um, enough is enough. You just need to get to that. You don't need to fix the problem completely. You just need to fix it enough. Product is a mindset and that can infect and inspire people across the spectrum and it should. Get to test quickly. So just, just share an idea enough that you can get a sense of does this solve a valuable, viable problem. Product is a team effort. It cannot be done alone. I'm absolutely convinced. And all you need to know is someone who does. A few credits. Thank you to Alan and Monique. Um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you to Form 3. This is, it's a great time to be hired and to be in a happy place. And a little bit about the template. Thank you. If you wanted to find out more, you can get to form3.tech slash careers. And you can also find out more about me on LinkedIn. I am happy to have questions, particularly from people who um, want to send me a message on LinkedIn and talk about making a move into product. Um, successful person this has made that transition after a conversation and it feels really good to give back. That quote is correct, Monique. And thank you. Thank you. Hi. I think um, another really good presentation, <clears throat> really enjoyed it. Uh, learn lots. We have got a couple of questions. Um, as always, um, you know, being BAs in the audience, there's, there's a lot of uh, people that want to find out more. So our first question is, we've got one from Aurelie, uh, who says, thanks for this great presentation, Oliver. What distinction do you make between product and service? Mm, good question. The last time someone really really had me dig through that was the late 90s <laughs> and uh, and that was where you had to choose as a pm am i in a service business or a product business product back then was to do with building something physical that became something software based service was more um consulting and working with people however moving into software as a service means ultimately they merge so right now, I would say that they are difficult to differentiate unless you're in a specialist industry. Um, and they shouldn't be. Um, every product needs to have a service wrapper. Hope that's a reasonable answer. Sounds reasonable to me. Um, another question here we've got, um, if someone has a history of being a business process analyst, but you want to try product management, what do you need to show to make the transition and are there any particular qualifications you should look at? 
when can you start? <laughs> we, uh, what's the first thing that someone says in a product interview um, when they say, great, I'm really glad you're joining. Um, this is what you'll need to do. The first thing that they generally say is we need more process. We know we need more process. We built this great thing. We're just not that organized. Can you bring in some of that agile, some of the process? You already have that. So I would say in terms of practically speaking, does having a scrum course help given the thousand pounds it'll cost you? Probably. When I first came to the UK, I spent that thousand pounds and I feel like it helped. Um, do you have to do it? I don't think so. Um, are there equally important and valuable courses available on Udemy and through other sources like Mind the Product, for example? I think there are. Having one bullet point maybe that says, I'm serious about wanting to make this shift and I've done some learning on it is helpful. Um, in terms of what you have done before, I would say it is purely a question of translating what you already do, likely in a product team, into a slightly different part of that product team. Meaning you are translating the fact that you already gather requirements to build backlog, gather requirements which is a bullet point in a product manager's job description. Um, you are translating things like run project, plan out, deliver stages, deal with um, setbacks, um, manage stakeholders. Those are almost all bullet points in a product role also. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that it is the way that you phrase and position yourself that really makes a difference to me. Um, and I say this from a really honest place because a lot of BAs are hired with the expectation that as they grow, they will become PMs within the team. So, um, so I think there's a really clear path there. You've just got to um, have a look at some product manager profiles, have a look at some product manager job ads and look at how they phrase the ads and what they are looking for. And then maybe have a look at the job description you currently have. And I think you'll find that they're quite similar. It's just the, the order of preference and priority is different. Um, so you are changing the way that you're positioned, not the way that you are. I hope that helps. So would you think it's more of changing your mindset and your approach rather than changing your skill set? Yes. Yes. So, so for example, I'll give you an example that is not entirely fair, but it's just really myopic. Um, sometimes you might hear a BA say, as a product person, I was dealing with external party X and they keep pushing us back and I'm really angry about it because we need to get this thing done. I need to get these requirements through so that we can hit the deadline. The same exact problem would be felt by the product person on that team and the way that they would reference it would probably be we're a bit behind on getting this through. We've got a way through management team. That way through is to work with this particular partner. Um, such and such is on it and these are the next steps. And I think that the quantifiable delay is probably about this. Um, we don't need you to engage, but I'll let you know if we do to sort the partner out. Hopefully you can see that the slight difference in the way that that's the mindset attacks that. The person who's actually dealing with it and banging their head against it every day and then the person who's kind of sharing the way the team is progressing so yes it's a it's a slight lifting up of perspective if you like because there is more market awareness in a in a product role um, but it is so close to what you are already doing that people are making this jump quite regularly so do you think it's the bas that look at quite commercial problems translate and, and make that tra transition a bit more easily, particularly if you're very customer um, facing? Perhaps. The reason I hesitate is that I've also seen people from customer service jump into product and they definitely have less process than you folks do, right? So, so if they can do it, you can do it. That's my, um, I've got to be true to my name, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I think that's all of the um, questions that we got collated, but um, if anyone has got anything, feel free to unmute and turn on your video and uh, we can kind of flow into a, a more free format, uh, less formal Q&A session if, uh, if anyone wants to hang around. Otherwise, I think we're probably um, at the end of today's session. 
and thank you all for uh, for attending. I hope it's been helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Oliver. That, that's really useful. And I actually have two questions. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to. Yeah. So it's really good you, you mentioned um, go out to listen to kind of people outside of products. You want to listen to people in your business, what they say, because their, their exposure will be different. Would there be kind of an example that you how you deal with kind of tension between kind of your, your product? Because as a product manager, you, you speak to your, your customers quite a lot or have users quite a lot. So you have a view, but the, the business, they, they may have kind of another view of how to, to ensure that this product is the most profitable and you get the most of your, your users, your customers, that, that sort of thing. How, how do you deal with those tensions? So that's question one. Question two would be, would, would there be kind of an example, like project example, because you mentioned that like there, there are a couple of things that if you, you could do these, you would be kind of massively helpful to your, your project managers. Is there kind of a particular example or a person that you, you could think of that they have done these things and they, they have been really helpful to, to you? Okay, well, let's start with that one because I can remember it and it was most recent. Uh, so yeah, so I'll just pick on a, um, a BA in our team without naming them. Um, uh, so, okay. I think one of the biggest things for me is folks think that the product people owning the thing means they will never let go of it. And maybe maybe we've all seen that, right? But um, but I don't I don't need to do everything myself. I just, I just love us all to get it done, right? So to give you an example, new BA joins the team, just love having them in the team. And they say, I noticed that this board is, is a bit like this. If I was to take this, this Kanban board and, and apply this kind of labeling system and maybe changing the, the columns in this way, would that be helpful? Do you mind if I do it? And he, he almost bought it to me as if I was gonna shout at him and say, don't touch my board, please. Um, completely revolutionized the way the team works. You know, that's what I mean when I say, please organize us. <laughs> it's, uh, we're better when we're organized. Um, and to your first question, do you want to just repeat that? Because I've forgotten it now. Yeah, that's about how, how do you deal with the tension between kind of your, your product team? Uh, yeah, this is a big one. This is a big one. And, and when you were talking, I was thinking, it's not about what you do next. It's about what you don't do next. And uh, personally, I've found... The only way that I can stay on top of that um, in a task sense is to use something like a Trello or a Git board or, a, um, or an Asana and have a, a to-do doing done across the board. Um, I'm sure a lot of you already have that or some form of it in your own mind. Um, I have to have things written down and I have to organize them in priority order or I forget them um, because I need to give my full attention to the thing that I'm looking at right now. To your question about the organization perhaps wanting to maximize profit or look good for investor or whatever might have been happening at that time in my past, um, then, then me knowing that this customer has been waiting for a long time and they're waiting for something that, that I know other customers need, which is really a critical success factor to actually getting to that goal. It comes back to leading people through logic and sometimes doing both to an extent that you can demonstrate that there are good reasons for this. Something that I've really encountered in the last three or four startups, is particularly with Form 3, is that sensible leaders listen. So if you go to them and say, look, I, I have... I've encountered this. We could go that way. We could go this way. I think it's this way for these reasons. They should challenge you and, and ask you why and ask you why not. Generally, they just want to get out of the way of getting you getting to the place that you and the team have decided is the best way to go. Um, if they don't do that, they are telling you more about them than they are about you. And it, there is definitely direct conflict between many PMs and leadership teams, particularly PMs and board of directors. And if that's not harmonized, then the business cruises and doesn't explode in growth. Um, so, so it is a very real thing and takes a lot of time. I've spent 50% of my time as a PM on reporting to different layers of, of management and, and board and investor, depending on what was happening in a given business. And that was important to that business at that time. And it was the only way we could get through this tension and the different layers of the org. That's great. Thank you. Thanks so much. 
And you're welcome. Anybody else for anything else, as my boss would say? All right. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. It's been a pleasure for us to have you. I look forward to the next one. I think I might even attend. <laughs> <laughs> and I see Phil has joined us. He's going to present um, to us um, next month. And uh, we've been in similar, well, we have worked for the same organization and we'll absolutely get behind that um, story around job titles. <laughs> Phil, I think, uh, I think you know the organization and uh, yeah, maybe you can just jump in and give everyone a quick hello for um, next month. Yeah, so this is the totally unpracticed, unrehearsed promotional pitch for next month. So what we eventually ended up with was sharing the experiences. I work with lots of companies in lots of countries in lots of ways. And so what I'm going to do is just give you an insight into how I work with different business analysts in different organizations and looking at it for, through the prism of what's happening with the adoption of Agile and what, what's that causing to happen to that if you like the legacy BA who was very much involved in all those stage gates up from analysis and all of that, where are they going? What are they doing? Um, and I'll give you a little thought to think about. Agile teams are multidisciplinary and support each other. Now, if you imagine that they're sitting in a greenhouse, is the BA inside the greenhouse helping being multi-talented? Or are they outside the greenhouse throwing stones at the windows trying to get their attention? I'll leave you with that image. Come back next month to hear more about it and how that can happen. Brilliant. Yeah, that would be good to talk about Agile because it's a big topic. And Agile um, as a whole, it has been around for, for years. And this year, actually, we are celebrating the 2020th birthday of, of Agile. So, so yeah, so it would be good to see and hear from, from Phil on how he sees how things has, has evolved and how, how, how he's, he sees these roles, what, what they mean in, in Agile as well. So that, that's really good. And final thing, actually, um, in terms of kind of promotion, towards the end of last year, um, Ellen and I worked very, very hard to put together the, the event calendar for 2020. So there, there were lots of really good resource goodies on our uh, social media and on Medium as well. So you are very welcome to, to check them out on different topics like data, um, uh, agile techniques, cybersecurity, basically lots of them that you, you can have a look and they are really relevant to our community. So, so do check them out. And if you are interested in being kind of an organizer, helping out in this community, make suggestions, be our, our speakers, all these, let us know. Please stay in touch on social media as well. Have a very nice evening and we will see you next month. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you all. It's really good. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. All the best.